Good evening. Welcome to evening prayer. I don't know if you've noticed, but we are living in an historic moment. Not just because of our experience of the first ever global pandemic in history, but also because of the global cry for justice following the murder of George Floyd. Now, there's all kinds of uh, complex thoughts and emotions and lots for us to process around this. Tonight's prayer through Psalm 36 will allow us to pray into these historic situations. We'll be praying for ourselves, we'll be praying for our neighbourhood, we'll be praying for the world. So if you've not done so yet, grab your own copy of the Psalms, uh, open up your Bible app and open up uh, Psalm 36. I'll be reading NIV, so if it's helpful to have the same translation, you can find that. But before we begin, we want to take a moment to pause to make ourselves aware of God's presence with us and to offer these moments to God. Say, here we are, Lord, we're opening ourselves up to you. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to us, shape us how you want to shape us. So we're going to do that in two ways. We're going to have a moment of stillness and we're going to light this candle as a visual reminder of Christ's presence with us. So let's be still. We light this candle as a sign of Christ's presence with us. And Lord, we thank you that even when we're not aware of you, you have been present with us today. In the moments when we've been stressed, in the moments when we've been worried, in the moments when we've been angry, in the moments when we've been exhausted, in the moments when we've been overwhelmed, in the moments when we've been joyful, when we've been laughing. Lord, there's not been a time today when we've been apart from you. But now we make ourselves aware that you are present with us. So Lord, gather our scattered thoughts. And ease our worries as you give us your perspective on your world. Amen. One of the themes that appears throughout scripture start to finish is the idea of a, uh, of a reversal of fortune. Uh, you know, Jesus talks about uh, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Um, sometimes it's talked about as an, an upside down kingdom. Or think of Mary's song that she sings whenever the angel announces to her that she is going to give birth to God's chosen one. In Mary's song, she says, He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their own inmost thoughts. He has brought down the rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich empty away. Now there's two things about this. The first thing is that uh, that should make most of us feel pretty uncomfortable as rich people. Uh, most of us have not experienced today when we didn't know when our next meal was coming from. Some of us have, um, but even by virtue of living where we live, we've had a support structure and a network um, which has often caught us, few of us, few of us have experienced poverty. 
And so this idea that perhaps uh, for others to be lifted up means that some of us might not quite have the comfort that we have at the moment um, is pretty uncomfortable. The second thing to say about this, which is particularly relevant at the minute, is if you are, if you use social media for anything other than church services, you'll have noticed quite a lot of people tweeting, uh, retweeting material from the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, I don't want to address that necessarily directly tonight. What I do want to address is the kickback against that, because quite often you'll find people saying, uh, equality, uh, justice, people who've been oppressed being brought to the top and those who have been on top being brought down, that sounds like Marxism to me. Well, don't believe it. Don't believe it because here it is. It's in scripture. I'm pretty sure Mary had never read the works of Karl Marx, uh, nor had King David. He wrote tonight's Psalm 36. Um, it begins, I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There's a, a bit of a meditation on the hearts of, of wicked people, people who would um, lord it over others. And then there's a twist in that, which is, uh, it suddenly just turns into this hymn of praise to God. Uh, so human wickedness is contrasted with God's goodness. And if there is a particular Christian take on the Black Lives Matter movement and all the really, really necessary and godly critique that is going on uh, in the world at the moment, it's that um, Christians should know that when we are highlighting the wickedness of others, we're not doing that because we think we are good. Okay, we're not virtue signaling in any way to use the the current phrase um we're highlighting wickedness because we know of the damage it's doing to people who god loves and cares about and are made in the image of god that's why we're doing it we're not saying we're better we're not saying we've got it right in fact we're acknowledging we have got a lot of work to do god has got a lot of work to do in our hearts um and if there's something to compare human wickedness to, it's not human goodness, it's God's goodness. Uh, Jesus being the perfect example of how to live a human life. And so as we pray this psalm together, maybe you want to be mindful of that, um, uh, of that movement, of that cry for justice. Maybe you want to be mindful of some of the... Um, the really difficult stuff happening at the heart of that or on the fringes of that. Maybe you just want to think as well at the same time of your own heart, uh, of the fact that, like me, you're rebellious against God. Um, you, don't, you don't want to do the right thing. You want to do what's right for you um, in your heart of hearts. Uh, and then we just continue to pray that God changes us, that the Holy Spirit transforms us, um, that God keeps renewing the grace that we rely on. Let's pray. It's Psalm 36. I have a message from God in my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In their own eyes, they flatter themselves too much to detect or hate their sin. The words of their mouths are wicked and deceitful. They fail to act wisely or do good. Even on their beds they plot evil. They commit themselves to a sinful course. And do not reject what is wrong. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains. Your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain 
of life. In your light, we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. So let's use these words as jumping off into prayer. Yes, Lord, we thank you that your heart is for justice. Lord, that your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your, your righteousness is like the highest mountains. Your justice is like a, the, the great deep. Lord, there's no limits to the depth of your justice. And Lord, Lord, most of all, we thank you for your love, which reaches to the heavens. And Lord, we thank you for this, uh, this great cry which has gone up. We thank you that people around the world are recognising um, where human brothers and sisters have been treated as less than human, have been treated as less than people of a, a different skin colour. And Lord, thank you that people of all colours, people of all creeds um, are stepping up and saying no, uh, no, no to when systems do this, no to when governments do this, no to when I do this, subconsciously, consciously in my own mind. Lord, we thank you that that captures your heart for uh, each one made in your image to, uh, to be loved. Each one, each human being that you created, Lord, that you are desperately in love with. So, Lord, as well as the justice, the cry for justice that we're seeing in this uh, in this movement, Lord, we pray that we might see righteousness too. We pray that we might see faithfulness too. We pray that we may see love too. Love most of all. And Lord, as we, um, as, a, as, a, as a culture, as a global culture, shine light onto particular kinds of wickedness. Lord, don't allow us to use that to deflect from, uh, from our own wickedness. Lord, your Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. Your Holy Spirit shows us um, the kind of dark corners of ourselves where, where we're where we're missing the mark, where we're not getting things right, where we're not living the way you would have us live, where we're not um, part of the solution to the brokenness of the world. Actually, God, we're being part of the problem. And so before you, Lord, we acknowledge our, our wickedness, our sinfulness, our, our prejudice and racism. Lord, we have preferred ourselves over our neighbours. We've not loved our neighbours as we love ourselves. And so, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he came to us as the one um, to begin to set these things straight in our hearts. To begin to heal human hearts. Thank you, Lord, that by Jesus' death on the cross, he has defeated the principalities and powers uh, of evil that are at work in the world. Thank you, Lord, that the price is paid for my sin. I can be completely forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, that you set me free to walk in your way. No longer weighed down by sin. No longer bound to keep making the same mistakes. But a new creation. And so Lord, as I am more and more submitted to you, I follow more and more after you, and I'm open more and more to your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, I pray I'd see more of your justice in my life. I pray that I'd see more of your faithfulness in my life. 
pray that you'd see I, that I would see more of your love in my life, Lord. Yeah, as uh, as John said of Jesus, He must increase and I must decrease. As Paul said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. May it be so, Lord. We pray that for the whole church uh, as we say these words together. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church and send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace be with you.